Hey, this is Dr. Kevin Christie, and welcome to another episode of Health Fit TV. Uh, this whole month of October, we've been discussing fitness fundamentals and low back pain. I've had some great interviews with some great uh, gym owners, fitness trainers, and really giving you a lot of valuable information on how fitness can help prevent and manage uh, low back pain. So I'm going to wrap up the month with a little bit of my take on things, and then we'll write a subsequent blog on all the information that we found. So where I wanted to start out is what I do in the clinical setting to help really bridge that gap from uh, maybe pain to full return to sport or return to activity. And one of the things we do in our office is called a selective functional movement assessment. You heard a couple of the trainers talk about movement screenings and movement training. The SFMA, what we do in a clinical setting, is really to try to figure out what's going on from a clinical standpoint and gives us a little bit of the workarounds from a rehab standpoint and also a manual therapy and chiropractic as well. And so from there, it gives us a roadmap on where we need to get this person back into return to sport or return activity. And in that way, the fitness program that they're doing is going to be very beneficial for them. Uh, what this set of screenings does or assessment is really just try to figure out head to toe some of maybe your mobility restrictions, some of your stability issues, mo movement patterns that are incorrect. And from there, it gives us a really good path to fix those. Sometimes it allows us to give you exercises that are not going to um, exacerbate the condition. So we can actually give you some correctives to work on improvement on some of the indirect causes of your condition. And at that point, when we can release you from care and get back into your fitness program, we also know what the trainer can do to help you for long-term resolution. So they can build some of these uh, mobility drills, stability exercises, movement pattern training into the fitness program to help you not only get uh, more fit and healthy, but also uh, to work on some of these uh, maybe you know restrictions that you have or some physical limitations. We all have them. It's just figuring out which ones they are. And when we do this selective functional movement assessment, uh, first thing we're really looking at is the cervical spine. Uh, we're checking some ranges of motion and also looking for any pain on, on those motions. If we have cervical spine restrictions on ranges of motions, we know that that's going to potentially cause us some neck, shoulder, mid-back uh, conditions to, you know, headaches even, things of that nature. Uh, then we're going to move down to the shoulder mobility. If you're lacking proper shoulder mobility, then trying to do overhead squats or some of the things we do in some of the high intensity interval training could be very difficult for you. So we want to make sure that you have proper range of motion in the shoulders and obviously no pain. Uh, then we're going to go and we're going to just do kind of like a standard toe touch. Can you touch your toes? If not, we need to figure out why. Is it tightness in the calves, the hamstrings, the low back? Um, there's a lot of different things that can, can cause that. It could even be upper back mobility restrictions. There's a lot of things we're looking for, but you should be able to touch your toes. And if not, and then your trainer's trying to get you into a deadlift or a squat, it could be problematic. So this helps us guide the trainer into say, okay, we have a restriction on the toe touch. We want to work on this uh, before maybe we're going to do some of the more advanced exercises. Uh, the next one we're going to do is kind of a standing extension test where we're going to go arms overhead and then go back into extension as far as we can to see uh, a little bit of uniformity in that spinal extension or pain or restrictions. Maybe you're not able to extend like you should, and that's going to cause all kinds of problems in whatever sport you may be playing or obviously, like I mentioned, activities. So we're going to check the extension. We're going to check spinal rotation. Uh, then we're going to go down and do hip stability. And then we're going to test your overhead squat. And that squat, if you can't do an overhead squat without uh, weight, then we obviously know it's going to be hard to do it uh, with weights. And so we want to make sure that that person can do a squat. And sometimes it'll be mobility restrictions in the ankles, knees, hips that cause that. Or sometimes actually it's a stability issue. Like I might hold on to your hands to give you the stability you need, kind of, uh, you know, I'm giving it to you and you get all the way down, no, mo no mobility restrictions, you're fine. But then if I don't hold you up, you can't go all the way down. And a lot of times that's indicative of lack of stability in the hips and maybe some center of gravity issues and things like that. But one of the take homes I want you to have is lack of stability in the hips. And so that's a problem because if you have um, inability to squat because you don't have stability in the hips and you go into a squat or a deadlift or any of these advanced exercises, you're gonna really chew up the lumbar spine and cause a lot of back issues. And so we wanna know that. Uh, so that's the selective functional movement assessment. 
A lot of the times what we find from a physical limitation standpoint that may be causing your low back pain that a trainer can really help you with is lack of ankle dorsiflexion is a big one. Um, there's definitely other mobility things we look for in the ankle, but as far as discussing this on, on a short Facebook Live, like I really want you to uh, understand ankle dorsiflexion is very, very important. You need to have hip stability and also hip mobility. Like you want mobility in the joint and you want stability of the musculature around it uh, to really help that lumbar spine function properly. Obviously, we want, we want good, good core stability. That goes without saying. We've heard that plenty of times. But uh, if you have lack of mobility in the hip and, and potentially lack of mobility in the mid-back, the thoracic spine, it's going to be really hard for you to get optimal core stability. So that's why we really try to address some of the mid-back thoracic spine mobility or the hip mobility in our correctives. And then from there, your trainer will be able to do a good job of bridging that gap from injury to return to sport and activity and build you a really good comprehensive fitness program that will not only get you to your health goals, whatever they may be, losing weight, getting in better shape. There's all kinds of uh, reasons we try to do that. Uh, obviously, just the overall health benefits. But the fitness can be a huge component and extension of the health care to prevent and manage some of the back pain that many, many Americans are suffering from. So uh, that's what we do in the office. That's how we try to coordinate and communicate with trainers uh, when we do co-manage. Because again, I do look at the, the trainer as an extension of the healthcare and it can be very vital into continuing your workout. You know, if you do suffer from say some low back pain, it doesn't mean you can't work out. We just really need to manage that and have some expectations and obviously maybe uh, exclude certain exercises for a period of time and then you know get to that point where we can do that so um, this is the final video on fitness fundamentals and low back pain and next month we will be doing a bunch of interviews on folks on the um, healthy desk jockey trying to keep the desk worker healthy so I hope you enjoyed this little series we'll be doing a blog to summarize all this and we'll get that out to you have a great Monday and we'll talk to you probably next week